Howdy, y'all. We got some freshly painted parts here. Let's get the valves adjusted on the engine so we can start putting them on there. I actually got a third coat of paint. So the primer and three coats of paint on all these parts uh, did that one off camera. So everything's looking really good. It's very well coated now. I'm a lot more comfortable with using it. There we are. Like new. Beautiful. Yes, this is the firewall. And yes, we just chased all the threads in this. And yeah, we're getting to that point. We're actually thinking about maybe getting somebody to come out here and do some sandblasting or there's like a water jet blasting on site here to clean up this kind of stuff, all of our sheet metal and the track frames and components. See this little wave right here? Yeah, it's bent in right here. I think if we lay it down straight edge here to here and just wrap it, it'll bring it right back and it'll be plenty good. That side looks good. I mean, I mean it it's not little, bad. It's, it needs to kind of cant out this way a little bit. That does look better. Yeah, that's not terrible. Over here on the engine, we're going to go ahead and take the racks off, put our push rods in, and do kind of a cold initial setting on everything and get this set up so we can put it together. Now we know that we're going to have to do several additional settings. We're going to have to take these off and on several times because once we get this warmed up, we got to adjust it again. And we're also going to have to retorque the head. Yep, everything's getting a little grease before it goes in here. Kind of quiet this morning. I think both of us are in a little bit of disbelief that we're actually doing this. Well, we've been a few weeks. We haven't done anything on this engine. Yeah, it, it, well, our, our little governor fuel pump thing really set us back a little bit each one of these guys too and up here gotta squeeze the springs together there you go wow well, there we go Got a little brass fitting right here for the oiler system that screws into the head right underneath there. <laughs> this is fun. You got to juggle three. Be sure you're in that one and then... There we go. And then this one over here, I can spring it in. I got this one started. That's started. There. I'm going to bend this loop a little bit so it's not into the valve cover. There and we go. this won't hit here. That should be fine because these are... Well, I covered. can roll it over there like that a little bit. We're going to need to find top dead center to do our adjustments, so I'm going to take this plate loose here so we can see top dead center marked on the flywheel. And we do know that this is going to be correct because when we did have the head off, we checked it. And I hate that I'm using a wrench on my freshly painted bolts here, but it is what it is. And we did already put a gasket on there, so that's good. We're going to put our oil filler on here so that we can get it on here before we put all the decompression system linkage on here. And Dad's working on that up on the table. Of course, he just made a gasket for this where it goes on there. And he's also put a new cork in here for the hinge cover to seal it. And I'm trying to scrounge up the rest of the parts. There's a stem that goes up here and a screen filter right here. 
we'll find that and get that installed too. Got the gasket dad made right here. Nothing like these old caterpillars. They always got one bolt that uh, you can't get a ratchet on. Eh, give you some time to meditate and reflect, I suppose. We know we got some touch-up paint to do around a lot of these things in the future. Got the cap to put on here next. And yeah, it's just got this flimsy little pin here. And no, it doesn't fit exactly perfect. And then just a couple of cotter pins to hold it in there. That's it. This is the filler to put oil into this machine, into this engine. But it's also kind of a catch can, similar to the, I don't know, vacuum evap systems on modern cars. But the filter canister that we're going to put on here next catches a lot of the vapors and the scum and gunk and oil. It actually separates it inside of here. And you can pull this plug out right here at the bottom and drain out that gunk and debris. Dad's putting the Woodruff keys in here on these shafts right here so we can put the arm on here that connects everything together. And the cotter keys go on the inside. At least they are on our 7J over there. And we got a long pin goes in here like so want a light no i got it there it is okay and then that'll clear all this huh. there we go the element in this filter housing and it's just a mesh like copper and then this post goes through it it's just a breather so when that vapor and oil vapor comes up through there, it kind of oils that mesh so dirt can stick to it and it can catch it. Basically, there's a aluminum cover over each end of that cylinder. I would set this on here. And then this on here. And then flip it upside down. You got to keep it centered and start feeding this coil, I'm trying to keep it off the floor. I got it. Feed this coil around that stem. How come we don't have an end here? Well, we do. We might have got it crisscrossed. Trying to do this on camera. All right. A little oil on our threads, and we, we got the genie back in the bottle here, so... Uh, this is made to service. You just take the nut off, pull all that apart. You can uh, clean it out in some solvent and put it back in. And they probably in the old days they used to use gasoline. There it is. Now that we can operate this, and we wanted to get this filter housing on there just to keep that hole covered up in the side of the block, we're going to go ahead and check our valve adjustment. There's Top center one and four, right one there. One and four? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're not bad. I think, what are they supposed to be, 20? Uh, Cold? We'll have to look that up. Go look in the book. For the D4400 engine, under the valves, it's saying exhaust and inlet. Uh, tap it clearance cold is 0 0.007 to point. Zero one zero of an inch. I think we'll just go eight or nine the start so we don't have them too tight yeah we definitely don't want them too tight let me just especially when it heats up it's going to get tighter let me do a nine we'll set them at nine starting here with cylinder one this is exhaust these two are intake they go into the intake here these two are exhaust they come out the exhaust port here these two are intake they come in through here and you have one more exhaust back here in the back. Facing the front of the engine, the engine turns clockwise. You're supposed to do these warm and keep it warm, uh, but obviously we can't do that, but we want to get them set close 
before we go any further and the procedure is outlined as following the book says to adjust the valves in the firing order of the engine one three four two so crank the engine in the direction of normal rotation until the inlet valve closes on number one cylinder then give the engine one half additional turn and adjust both valves on number one cylinder at the same time This hole right here is down, so I'm just going to put a black marker right here so that we can keep track of one half of a turn. So that should be straight up, I'm assuming. Yeah, but go the right way. So yeah. You're going counterclockwise. So we want to be... Right right there so we did our additional half turn and it says to adjust both valves at the same time on number one okay tighten him up and we're starting with this one this intake good yeah snug it up okay number 10 don't go nope it's starts but it don't want to go and a nine is good okay Okay. Now we're going to do the exhaust. All right, right there. Wait a minute, let me... Got it? Yeah. Okay. That's a loose nine. Mm. A 10's real tight, though. Yeah, yeah I, no, no, let's leave it. Because okay. I got to kind of force the 10. Are you snug? Yep, it's snug. Now we do the same thing and jump to three. Okay, you're, you're open now. Now it's coming up right there. Right there. Going another half turn. So that hole was down at the bottom. So we'll get to the next hole. There's only two on this flywheel. So this is, should be right there. There. That's nice right there, if I can hold it there. Got it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, see, in a 10, it's a really tight 10. Okay. And a loose 9, so we'll leave that in there. All right, and we should be able to adjust the uh, both of them intake now we're supposed to have done the intake first after our half turn we can do them both right got it okay right there got it yeah i'm a little loose well it's a tight 10 and a loose yeah let's leave it there are you tight yes another half turn that should be right about there. Okay, right there. Tight 10. Well, there you have it. We got the valves adjusted. We made very good progress today. I do want to thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. We're going to need to know where Top Dead Center is. So I'm going to get into here and get to my marker. We're going to need to find Top Dead. We're going to need to find Top Dop Dead. <laughs> We're going to need to find top dead center. So basically this stuff coils around in there like a like those snakes in the peanut can. And dad's having fun yeah. trying to get it back in the peanut can. Yeah. This is what you call a opening a can of worms. Yeah. Because that stem has got to go down through the middle of all of it. There. So I think what can I'm I gonna... show you how I would do it, Dad? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna show Dad how I would do this. That's how you're supposed to do it. Hello, Mrs. L A O L. Hello.